after a miscarriage, what next? How long will it take your body to get back to normal? And do you have to wait to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And today we're talking about miscarriage, pregnancy loss, and getting pregnant again. This channel exists to help you learn more about your body. So I would love it if you would subscribe, share, comment, like, follow along so that we can help spread our message about your body and education to more people. Miscarriage is a topic very near and dear to my heart because I had many pregnancy losses on my own way to becoming a mom. And I know there's so many questions. And when I started to experience my own pregnancy loss, this is really when I started searching the internet to try to find answers that I didn't know. So I think it's important to understand some of the testing, what to do, and understand some of the noise that you may hear. If you are somebody who's experienced a pregnancy loss, number one, big hug. You're not alone. Miscarriage is common and increasingly is common as we get older. The general rate for pregnancy loss is one in four, but as you get older, that rate is increasing. The number one cause of pregnancy loss is going to be random genetic abnormalities. These increase as you get older. The way I like to think about it is if you imagine inside the ovary, you have that vault where all your eggs are kept. The eggs are there your whole life, absorbing the wear and tear. And the older you get, the chromosomes inside have been exposed to more. And so they are degraded and just have a higher predisposition to splitting abnormally and having genetic abnormalities. That being said, younger women can still experience miscarriage. Miscarriage can still happen. And you can have predisposition, something called recurrent pregnancy loss, even if genetics are normal. So these are things like clotting disorders, autoimmune disease, chronic illness, having not a random genetic abnormality, but having a translocation or something in your own chromosomes and anatomic causes. So if you are experiencing two or more pregnancy losses back to back, you haven't had a live birth, you should definitely get an evaluation and talk to your doctor about some of this testing. When you're in the process of experiencing a pregnancy loss, yes, you're going to want to understand what, if anything, can be done to determine what caused it, but understand that a lot of that is going to be determined after the fact. Where you are in the moment is we have to reshift our focus to how do we help you recover from this and getting to the next step. In general, the further along you are, the longer it's going to take you to recover. So if you are before 10 weeks pregnant, it is generally going to be a faster, easier process than if you're in the second trimester or further. Miscarriage overall is defined as a loss before 20 weeks. After 20 weeks, it is considered a fetal demise or a stillbirth. There's many different types of pregnancy loss and classification. So very quickly, a biochemical pregnancy loss or a chemical pregnancy is one where you had a positive test, whether it's urine or blood, and then it went negative, you started bleeding, you had the loss before you ever had anything seen on ultrasound. A spontaneous pregnancy loss, also called a spontaneous abortion, because abortion is a loss, is when your body starts miscarrying all by itself. So you start bleeding, and this is typically the definition given after you've had a confirmed pregnancy, and then you lose. A missed miscarriage or a missed abortion is when the pregnancy stopped growing. You typically didn't have any signs of it. You went in for an ultrasound, and either there was no fetal pole, just an empty sac, that's officially considered a blighted ovum or an embryonic. You could have a fetal pole that's small, stopped growing, doesn't have a heartbeat, could have had a heartbeat and now it doesn't. But this all falls into the category of you haven't bled yet, but this is not going to become a live birth. An incomplete miscarriage or incomplete abortion is when your body is bleeding and in the process, but you haven't completed the process. And then you have you know, pregnancy of unknown location. And this is where it could be an ectopic pregnancy or an early failed uterine pregnancy, but you don't know. You've got positive pregnancy tests and you don't see a pregnancy inside the uterus at the appropriate stage on ultrasound. And our big fear there is that if it's ectopic and not diagnosed, can it rupture? Can you bleed internally? This is a surgical emergency and carry some morbidity with it. One of the things we know is that when you're having a loss, your body is going to need some time to recover. But a lot of people will just across the board say, you can't try for three months and give you some amount of time that's not supported in the literature. 
So there was a study done showing that women who had a spontaneous pregnancy loss, meaning this wasn't something that needed medical intervention, this is a different category, started trying to get pregnant right away or waiting three months. And the groups that started trying within the zero to three month range, so sometime before the three month interval, got pregnant faster and have higher live birth rates than the group that waited till three to six months. So that should make us feel confident in not needing to wait unless your doctor tells you to. And there's circumstances where that may be the case. But in general, if your body didn't need any intervention, you had a loss, you should feel confident that you can try again unless you're told otherwise. The further along you are, the longer it's going to take that HCG to get back to zero. Remember that HCG is what we detect in a pregnancy test. So the pregnancy test and a pregnancy test that's on blood, whether it's a urine or blood test, are both detecting HCG levels. HCG is the hormone that the early pregnancy makes that the placenta makes, and it doubles in the very early pregnancy. It does plateau. But HCG is also working to tell the body to make progesterone, and it's suppressing your body from growing an egg in the next month. So before you can ovulate and get pregnant again, you need your HCG to drop. It's also important to know that HCG dropping is a good sign for your body to know that you did, in fact, complete the miscarriage. There's no remaining placental tissue or pregnancy tissue. And the reason why that's important is pregnancy tissue that remains inside can be inflammatory can prevent you from getting pregnant. If it keeps making HCG, you may not ovulate, but also it can cause scar tissue inside the uterus. And so since we don't want to have scar tissue, anything inside the uterus, it's really important to make sure that gets all the way down. I recommend people take a pregnancy test and make sure that it's getting to zero, meaning a negative urine test. Urine HCG thresholds are not zero, meaning you could have a very low level positive. So if you see a faint line, if you see anything on a urine test, that's not normal the further out you go. If you had a surgical intervention, you had a DNC, HCG levels should drop more dramatically because we know all the tissue did in fact come out in one go. A study has shown that by two weeks after that DNC, the vast majority of people should get a negative urine test and by four weeks for sure. If you had mesoprostol, mesoprestone, those are some of the pills oral or vaginal that you can take to induce a miscarriage, or you had a natural miscarriage where your body just started miscarrying, it is not uncommon that it could take longer up to four to six weeks to see those HCG levels drop. And that's because the pregnancy loss takes a little bit longer. It's not just in one swoop of going in and suction aspirating everything. However, if you're four to six weeks out and you don't have a negative HCG test, a negative urine pregnancy test, you need to call your doctor, get an evaluation, get an ultrasound, because I've definitely seen people have this drag on for months and months. Other warning signs that pregnancy is not resolved can be persistent bleeding or spotting, pain, your pregnancy symptoms, staying like sore breasts or nausea, fatigue. And so if you have any signs that the pregnancy hasn't resolved, I think a lot of people are unaware that sometimes the pregnancy doesn't resolve itself completely, even with medical management. And this is why following those HCG levels down to zero, the blood test is my preference. That's what I do for my patients in clinic, but I understand that's a unique environment. But if your OB says you can try right away when your period comes back, well, how long is that going to take? It's normal for that first period to be delayed. I do not expect you to bleed again until six to eight weeks after you had that loss. And it could be up to 10 because you have to have HCG come down to zero. Then you can grow an egg to ovulate, which would take a couple weeks. And then if you are not pregnant, you could get pregnant then. If you're not pregnant, that period would come two weeks later. So if 10 weeks have passed and you've not had a period, red flag. If six weeks have passed and you're still getting a positive pregnancy test, they may tell you to give it a little bit longer. But if it's very dark, that's not normal. If you're still having bleeding or spotting at the six-week mark, also not normal. Once you get that HCG down to zero, know that your body is going to start to recruit an egg to ovulate. And so if you don't want to be pregnant, don't forget you can still get pregnant in that time zone. So you'll want to make sure you're using appropriate contraception. And if you can't start back on birth control, if that's your choice, condoms, abstinence. Hard to track cycles when HCG is in your system. So overall, I always felt like I wanted to get 
back into trying as soon as I could. And the one thing that I think is a really important takeaway is that you need to know the signs that your body hasn't resolved the miscarriage. So that medically, there's no need to wait when you're having a miscarriage. There's some debate about timing of frozen embryo transfers. And then definitely if you had an abnormal pregnancy, like an topic that needed methotrexate or a molar pregnancy that needs further evaluation, those are unique scenarios. So if your doctor says something different, always listen to that or ask them why so that you can understand better. It's important for you to be your own advocate when it comes to your reproductive health. Ask questions below so that we can understand our bodies. I'm happy to answer them. I know miscarriage is an isolating thing, but you are not alone. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.